Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to spin weld fittings into a gray, black, or freshwater tank in an RV. And this will be helpful for anybody that is building their own RV, a schoolie conversion, a van conversion, or renovating a vintage travel trailer like myself. This will go in my 1961 Airstream Bambi. Before I teach you how to put these fittings in a polyethylene rotocast tank, let me bring you up to speed on the Bambi project. Last time you saw us, we sandblasted and media blasted the inside of the trailer as well as the frame of the trailer. Well, since then I cleaned the frame up really well and I POR 15 painted it. And I put three coats on and it's a silver, vintage silver color. Uh, which matches similar to what they would have had when the trailer was new in 1961. I then drove the Airstream to a dealership and had an axle put in. I Originally it had a 2,500 pound rubber torsion axle system. I upgraded to a 3,500 pound axle system to hold the additional weight I added during the renovation as well as update the hub assembly. It was a four lug system before now it's a five lug and I was able to go from a 13 inch tire all the way up to a 14 inch and gain a good amount of clearance between the ground and the bottom of the travel trailer. Now the trailer's back home and I ordered a tank from VintageTrailerSupply.com and it was about $179. Now they have the option where they, if you measure the tank and give them all the measurements and all the size fittings that you want to put in, they'll spin weld them in for you. But since it was the middle of the renovation, I wasn't sure where things were going. I wound up with a complete tank. So this tank has no holes in it anywhere. And it's about 11 and a half gallons. And this is what I'm gonna use for my black waste tank in the trailer. Now I could also buy more of these tanks in different shapes and sizes and use them throughout the rest of the trailer. The freshwater tank I have already has all the fittings in it. I ordered that from Ink of Plastics and they shipped it to my house. And they have a standard tank size with standard fittings, or you could tell them where you want your fittings. And since I was a freshwater tank and I was going above the floor in a location that was underneath the soap with a lot of room, I was able to tell them where I wanted the fittings. But for a black tank, I needed to do this on site. So here's a couple things you gotta really think about when you're putting in one of these tanks. You have to make some care measurements. You're not gonna be able to find a tank if you're doing a replacement that fits the same exact size because the tank that was in there originally was a fiberglass tank and it was molded to the Airstream shape. So the one I have is a corner cut tank and it will fit in the corner of the trailer to simulate the original tank. The reason why I'm changing the tank is because I'm not changing any locations of everything but it had an antiquated wastegate underneath it and it was fiberglassed right into the tank and there's some retrofits you could have done i just figured if i'm doing a renovation i might as well start off with a brand new black tank after removing the tank which involved cutting the vent line as well as the brackets to hold the tank down to the floor and the wastegate underneath i removed it and cleaned the area very well and then I brought in the new black waste tank and made some careful measurements. And then I was able to make some markings on the tank itself to indicate where I want these fittings. On VintageTrailerSupply.com, they have uh, all the different fittings you could get. And they have standard ones for toilet. They have vents and gray waste drains. They have ones that you could use to put a black tank flush in the tank. And then they have uh, another style vent. So they have all different ones. And then you have to take a micrometer or caliber and measure what size these are. So you could drill the right size hole in the tank. And you need these hole saw bits, all different sizes. So, you know, it, it can, the cost can add up. One of the things that I discovered after doing research is that you need a router that is at least two to three horsepower and has a half inch shank. Most 
homeowner type routers have quarter inch shanks. So it's another thing to think about. I called the local home center to see if I could rent one, but unfortunately they don't rent that size. So I had to buy one for this project, but I have a lot of other projects coming up. So I'm gonna keep this one in my collection of tools throughout my basement. You need uh, here and eye protection and you wanna make sure when you do a spin weld on a tank, this is, the router is going to be spinning at 1800 to 2500 RPM. And I'm going to have a hole in the tank and this is going to spin at a high rate of speed and it's going to bond itself right to the tank. They call it spin welding because the, the uh, polyethylene melts to this piece and bonds it. Well, you're going to get some molten plastic that's going to come off so you don't want to get that in your eyes. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to lay this tank down on the workbench and we're going to drill in one of the smaller ones first. And what's nice about this is if you do make a mistake, you could spin well just a regular cap on it. There's already one on the bottom that they put in when they made it. This was the hole that was part of the rotocast and this was empty at one point and they spin weld this fitting in here to seal the hole that was on the bottom. This is the bottom of the trailer. It's going to go through the plywood floor and this is where the wastegate is going to attach. So I have to put a hole here. I have to put a hole here for the toilet. I'm going to put one here for the vent. One here for the kitchen sink. This is going to be a combination gray black tank. And then one here, I'm going to prep it if I want to ever want to do a black tank flush. After you've measured everything out, you could now start to put your fittings in. And uh, this particular fitting here will be flush to the top of the tank uh, when it's in. And this one here is going to sit proud of the tank. So I'm going to use the one that sits proud of the top for the vent. And the one that sits flush, I'm going to use for uh, the sink drain. So the one for the toilet, well, there's two of these three inchers. There's one here and one here. They're both different. So what this one would be for is when you want to put the toilet in the tank, all this will screw right into it and it'll be flush at the top. This one's going to go on the bottom of the tank and it's going to spin weld in from the bottom up and it'll allow the waste to come out. So there's not going to be a lip there that will keep waste in the tank. So you got to make sure you're mindful of which fittings to use. And Vintage Trailer Supply has a good tutorial on their website that will uh, show you which fittings to use in any particular situation. So you don't want to get them mixed up. So I'm going to leave this one out of the way. I know these are going to be here. So now what we have to do is see which size drill bit I have to use for this. So I'll get my calipers out. All right, this is 1.87. So you got to make the hole a little bit bigger because you don't want the fitting to bind. And we're going to dr uh, drill the hole. This is a two inch drill bit. And I'm going to put my safety glasses on, put this in the chuck, and we're going to drill a hole. So once you do this, that's it, right? You can always patch it if you mess up. So two inch, this is the fitting right here. It's going to sit up here. I'm going to drill the hole. You can see the tank is pretty thick here and that's why it took a while to get through. All right, so now that we have that, we've got to clean up these edges here and get rid of any of this little bit extra plastic here on the top. You don't want any burrs there. All right, now what we have to do is take the router with the right bit and we're going to put our fitting in. It's going to spin at a high RPM and it's going to bond itself. Now some of the tips here is when you get this in, uh, you're going to see a liquid form here. Once you see that, stop. Because what could happen is you could burn all the way through and make a huge hole if you go too long. So you want to see a full liquid around the edge and then you stop. Hold in place, let it uh, dry, and then you can pull it out. You're going to see some smoke too. We're going to take the correct bit, it fits into these little grooves here, and that's what's going to spin this. And we're going to put in our half inch shank router. OK, 
Okay. All right. Got to get my inner protection on. Looks like we got full bond all the way around. It's like a molted plastic. Fittings in there. Let's do the next one. This one's going to be a two and a quarter inch drill bit. Now for the toilet fitting. Okay, that'll be four inches. Four inches. I could flip the tank over and do the last fitting. That'll be the wastegate fitting. Well, that's it. This is probably one of the most important ones here because this is the bottom of the tank and you wouldn't want this leaking out of this, this ledge here. So I let it run a little bit longer to melt it a little bit hotter, uh, but that should be about it. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. We'll see you soon.